Right now, a disaster is unfolding for owners of the Orca FPV-1 goggles. If the goggles are powered up with the date inside the goggles set to April 29th, 2023 or later, the bootloader in the goggles stops working and the goggles will not boot up. The most important thing for you to know right now is that you should not power up your Orca FPV-1 goggles because if you don't power them up, then they can't brick themselves and they will be easier to fix in the future. But what if you did power them up and they're already bricked? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video, including how this happened in the first place and how to recover them. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. Question number one. Who is vulnerable to this bug? And the answer is every single owner of every Orca goggle, whether it's V1 or V2, as far as we can tell, they all are affected by this. And what causes the goggle to have this problem is when you power it up with the date inside the goggle set to April 29th, 2023 or later. So if you've been using your goggles all weekend and you haven't been affected, there's a chance that it's because you've never updated the date on the goggles and they just don't know that it's 2023 yet. You can find out about this by looking at the last DVR files you recorded, if you have one handy, and in the date on the DVR file will reflect the date that the goggle thought it was at the time that it recorded the, uh, the DVR file. If you look at that and the date says, you know, 2020, 2019, 2000, whatever the date is that they came from the factory with, if those DVR files show an older date, then in theory, you're okay to keep using the goggles. Just don't update the date to be correct. Welcome to the future. Orca has sent an email this morning with instructions for how to unbrick the goggles. We're gonna click this link. I'll put a link in the video description if you didn't get the email from Orca for some reason. Uh, we go to this web page and there are three firmwares here. You're gonna pick the firmware depending on which version of the goggles you've got, whether you've got the older V1, the newer Orca FPV-1 Pilot V2, or the FPV-1 Race goggles. I have the FPV-1 Pilot, so I'm going to download this firmware. The instructions say to format your SD card. They don't say how to format it, but we're gonna guess it's FAT32 or something like that. FAT32, works for me. I downloaded the firmware, and is that it? Oh, unzip the folder onto the root of your SD card. So here on the right is the SD card. Here on the left is my downloads folder. Here's the zip file that I downloaded, and I'm gonna double click to open the zip file. And the instructions say, there's another zip file inside the zip file. That's a little confusing. I don't know why they put a zip file inside a zip file, but I think what they want me to do is go into this zip file and then grab that contents and put it on the SD card. So you should see on your SD card, you should not see 1v2.zip. You should see license and 1v2 blah, 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 dot orca. Take the SD card out of the computer. We put the SD card in the goggles and power it up, and that's it. That's literally it. So they say. SD card is inserted. Plug in the battery. They're beeping. Oh, shit's going on. They're powering down and powering up. We've got bootloader mode again. Let's see. If the update process is taking long, the goggles will turn off and on automatically after a few seconds. Turn off, and then turn on the goggles again and wait for the update process to complete. Oh, some shit's going on. I don't know. We're just going to wait, and we're going to let this go on for a minute. I have an idea about why the fix isn't working for me, and I'm going to tell you what my idea is while I show you a workaround if you have the V2 goggles and the fix isn't working for you. If you have the V1 goggles, what I'm about to show you isn't possible, and... I'll have to think some more about what you should do. But if you have the V2 goggles and the fix isn't working, you're gonna have to open them up. And the good news is that Orca previously posted this fix, that's how I know how to do it, and said if you have any problems with this, like if you tear your faceplate foam, or if you damage your goggles, that all sins will be made whole by them. So if you have to do this, don't worry, I mean, obviously try not to break your goggles, but what we have to do is we have to remove the Velcro and the, or the faceplate foam to get at these screws. Oof, it's a good adhesive. And the first thing we have to do is remove these four Phillips head screws 
from the front of the goggles. These one, two, three, four. Uh, and the reason I think the update didn't work for me is previously a file was posted by the developer who made the bootloader, name of Swarg, that's what they go by, and this file claimed that it would extend the deadline for the goggle bricking to July 1st. I guess they were trying to get Orca to pay up or something. Uh, and Orca said, don't flash this file, it's you know, malware. Uh, and then Orca said, here, flash this file instead that we've got for you, and it'll fix your goggles. And people used a technique called MD5 checksum to verify that these two files were identical and said, hey, I thought you said this was malware. Why are you now telling me to put it on my goggles? Next, we're going to take these three hex head screws out. They are a 1.5 millimeter. I asked someone within Orca off the record, they said, that uh, what they've done is verify that there is no malicious code in there and then use that file to temporarily unbrick the goggles and then overwrite the whole goggle with firmware that then doesn't include the, uh, the bug, the whatever you want to call it. But since I set my goggles to 2024, they are past the July 1st deadline and that process didn't work. So here is the workaround if for some reason you're in the same situation. And take off this plate here, the digital. Where do you freaking get this off? There we go, get that out. And then the top plate of the goggles comes off, supposedly. Oh, it's not hard. Oh, well, that wasn't hard at all. And right here, we're gonna see two pads. These are bootloader pads. And what we're gonna to need to do is get something conductive. You could use a paper clip, you could use a metal tipped tweezers like these. And we're gonna short these pads. And while we're shorting those pads, we are going to power the goggles up and that will put them in super secret, super duper bootloader mode. But first we have to prepare an SD card and it's not just as simple as copy files out of a zip file, it's slightly more complicated than that. To make the SD card, we have to refer back to this document, which was posted by Orca some time back and then withdrawn as mm, not working reliably enough for enough people. But it will show us the method to access the bootloader pads and flash the V2 goggles if the other method doesn't work. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is download this file, this sdimage.image file. We'll download that. Uh, yes, the, I have the FPV-1 pilot. Uh, if you have the FPV-1 race, there's a separate uh, file. And we will need an SD card imager. I guess we'll download this one, Rufus. We're gonna image this SD card that came from the goggles. Yep, that's the one. And we're going to select an ISO, disk or ISO, but we're gonna need to take that out of the zip file. So here is the zip file we downloaded and we're just going to take the image file out and put it in the downloads folder and disk or iso image please select where do i select there we go select sd image image that's the one okay and make sure we've selected the right drive here and start i, I think it worked it'd be nice if it said complete seems right here we go back to the bench now we are not going to put this SD card in the goggles yet. According to the instructions from Orca, what we're going to do is short circuit the bootloader pads and power the goggles up and wait for four reboot cycles. I don't know why. This is a little annoying because like holding the goggles, uh, the tweezers on there, it's really easy to accidentally like lift it up slightly and not be bridging it. But there you go. Got to do what you got to do. One. Okay, two. Uh, three. Wait, four reboot cycles. Four. I mean, was that three, four reboots or four power-ons? That's four reboots. We remove the tweezers. Okay. Oh, it's still happening. You release the tweezers, they continue to reboot by themselves, then we insert the emergency SD card into the goggles. Okay. 
bootloader SD card mode will reappear. It did, <gasps> and it's loading. Oh, this hasn't happened yet. Please wait, it's doing the, f the normal firmware update procedure. Oh, it's rebooting. Oh, they're alive. They're alive again. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha, I see. So this has reset them back to 1st of January, 2021. And that means that the next thing we can do and probably should do is do that first update procedure to put the latest actual official Orca firmware on these goggles with potentially some other fixes. Like, I think right now, if I set the, I don't want to do this all again. If I set the date to 2024, then I don't know what's going to happen. But the next thing I'm going to do is go back and I'll do that step again. I will say, um, at the time that I'm recording this, the fix for the V1 goggles was not working and Orca just published another fix, which is supposed to do the V1 goggles. And there are some people for whom their V2 goggles still aren't working and Orca is, has another fix in the works. Rather than hold this video off, all of these fixes are the, the, the same procedure. It's just another different file that you have to download and put on the SD card. So I'm gonna put a link to the Orca Owner's Lounge Facebook group. That is where the updates are being posted the mosted and you should go check posted the mosted then you should go check there and if it's not working for you see if there is a newer firmware posted but i don't think the procedure is going to change yay hey if this video helped you out please consider joining my patreon patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as two dollars a month or more if you feel like i've earned it However much you decide my content is worth, I would love to have you as a subscriber. $2 a month is way less than you spend on this hobby. I know it and you know it, but your wife doesn't know it. Cheap joke. Uh, if you feel like I've earned $2 a month, I would love to have you. It is it is a small amount, but it really does add up. It really does matter. And hey, you know, maybe a little more. It's up to you. Link in the video description to my Patreon. And, uh, you know, if that, if this didn't do it for you, that's okay. I'll just keep making content and I'm going to keep trying to earn your support. That's it. Happy flying. Woo! Yoo! This was a, a nail-biter. <laughs>